in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
sunflower's face. Because like where the sun goes, they're like, oh, the sun. And so I wanted, I wanted to do a fun little activity. Okay, so like, I'm gonna need you to stand up. We're gonna have to, we're, we're gonna do a slight exercise. So I am the sun. So I wore, wore my yellow shirt today. I'm the sun. You are my little sons in training, little sun juniors. And audience participation will be needed. All of you are beautiful sunflowers. And so wherever the sun and, and sun juniors are, you have to follow us either with your, your whole bodies, if you want to stand up, make it easier. So come, we're the sun and we're going to travel. And everyone is going to follow and look at us. Oh, look at everyone looking at us. Because what's the like, you got to keep up. you got to keep up. Oh my gosh, we're the sun. Look at everybody looking at us. The beautiful sunflowers. Look at the beautiful faces. Oh my gosh, we're going to go to the narthex. <laughs> Canned goods. And last week we had almost 
Wow. That's right. I think you, I, you said that was the most you've had in a long time, at least. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Uh, recycle reuse bins will be outside of uh, the, the doors as you exit. Please make use of them with any of your paper goods that you're not taking with you. Kevin, are you, are you, first of all, Kevin had surgery on Tuesday, and there he is. <laughs> wow. Um, are we doing prayer circle tomorrow? Tomorrow. And he's going to do prayer circle tomorrow. So, if Kevin can be here on for a prayer circle tomorrow, so can you. It's at 6 o'clock, right in this room, and it's just about 45 minutes, would you say, of um, just looking at the prayer concerns from the day before and the ongoing prayer concerns and having and having a time of prayer. And it's on the first, fourth, and, and if there is a fifth Sunday that month, fifth Sunday of the month. And so thank you, Kevin, for keeping that going. People need to come because they need to help them sit down and get up. Oh, okay. <laughs> And but I'm, I'm, we, we can talk about it, but we well we can talk about it now instead of the first time. Everything's okay, right? Every the, the, the surgery went well, and wow, that's that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Little Rock Church coffee is available, regular decaf, ground whole bean, and we still have bags of the dark roast, which is the holiday blend. So it really is good. Anybody have had the holiday blend before? It's really nice. It's really nice. we actually should. Make it one week for the coffee, and so people can try it. And you know, um, giving statements have been sent out for 2023. Uh, some people said they already got one. If you feel that you were supposed to get one and you didn't get one, uh, uh, wait, you know, just, uh, give it a few more days. And if not, contact uh, Nadia in the church office, and uh, her uh, email address is in the bulletin. And Nadia has put here: Do not ask Michael about it. I'm just reading what it says. <laughs> Honestly, because some people ask me stuff on Sundays, and then it's just out of my head. It's just, by the end of the day, somebody said something to me about something, and, and that's all I remember. Uh, Bible study is this and every Wednesday at 6 o'clock on Zoom, uh, so make sure we have your email address so we can continue with that. Choir rehearsal. Gracie, do you want to say anything about choir rehearsal? Oh my gosh, it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> you should come. Sometimes there's cookies if I am in the mood. Um, and this would be a great time to start because we're starting to work on the Good Friday. Very accessible concert. So it's a good time to uh, join us. Thursday nights? Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. Right, right seven, here. Eight. Yep, in my room. Thank you. Uh, there is going to be a memorial service for Arlene Williams. If you didn't know Arlene, but you know Jeanette on Arati, Arlene was Jeanette's mother, and she passed a few weeks ago. Uh, she, in addition to being Jeanette's mother, she was a member of our, the, our, the, our congregation for a long time and attended our 8 o'clock service for many years. And uh, the, when I think about her, I can't, and it was when she was, when she was with us, and even now, when somebody mentions her name, I can't not smile, because she just was that bright of a light. She just was, and still is, because she still makes me smile when I think about her. Just, she, like, the thing I remember the most about her at church was that she, in the last few years of her life, she had a walker with a bike bell on it. And when she, when she was coming in that side door, if you were in the way, she was like, coming through, coming through, and the bell, ding, 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 and she came in. And so it was, she was a delight and um, a wonderful woman. So it, this Saturday at one o'clock at Little Brown Church, there's going to be a memorial service for her with a reception on the back lawn afterwards. Uh, so come in, uh, give uh, Peter and Jeanette and the boys a hug. Because um, they're missing her uh, desperately, as we all are. Michael? Yes. We are trying out a new young person on piano this morning. <laughs> oh, and Laura Hall is here, everyone. <laughs> I was going to mention that at the praise report at, at, the, at the prayer time, but yeah, Laura, it's so great to have you here. Um, it, uh, although it's funny because you, even though we don't see it for like, such a long period of time, when you're here, it just feels like you're home. So it doesn't look any, it doesn't feel, you know, I forget. Oh, wow, we haven't seen her for months. That and we Zoom. So, but uh, it is wonderful to have you here. 
In a moment, we're going to be going to prayer, so if you have something on your heart or your mind you would like to uh, lift up during our time of prayer, uh, Rick Goward will be collecting our prayer cards that are located in your uh, in the pews right in front of you. And as always, for those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, you can post your joys, concerns, prayers down in the comment section down below. But let us prepare our hearts for our time of prayer through music. Man of Swan, 
for, is it Kevin? Oh, for Kevin, for that Kevin. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I bother coming today? <laughs> Prayers and praise for Kevin's recovery, and Linda Kern's recovery. Uh, next, her, Linda's next doctor appointment is this Friday. Also prayers for Amanda's niece, Sarah, uh, for her struggles, and for students who are struggling with mental health issues. Okay. Sandra, I heard you bring, you brought this in. She's probably watching. It's Cassandra Hendrickson, uh, who is someone that our elders uh, do visitation and uh, bring communion to. Uh, perhaps the prayers for Nancy, a fellow resident of her convalescent home who fell and may need um, an invasive surgery. Uh. Rick Gower has some prayers for himself, having a nerve study on Friday uh, and on your left arm and hand. Donna Hurst, prayers for your nephew Alex and the entire family to support him through a difficult time. Prayers for Rosie and Herb. Uh, she has her terminal cancer everywhere. Uh, but, but she's she's delighted to get to see the face of God. So uh, I, I worry less about her and more about her husband who's been calling. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any uh, prayer concerns that they'd like to just share in the room?
Um, and, and it is so wonderful when anyone from our church family who has moved uh, comes back. We had Tom and Sally last a couple of weeks ago, and it was it's just so wonderful that this family, even though some of us move away, that, that you have created such a bond within this community that we uh, that we um, still hold that bond even when we are miles and miles from one another. And we want to lift up Kevin also the joy of, of having uh, prayed for him for so many weeks and to have him sitting here not even a week after this procedure is it's a blessing to our church as he has always been a blessing to our church and so we thank you for his healing and we ask for his continued healing we pray for each and every one of these that are mentioned today you know there's there's so much that we have going on in our lives and uh, so it's very often our loved ones or ourselves suddenly are taken ill and it is so unexpected or it is something that goes on uh, for a long period of time and either way it is something that uh, it, it's hard for us sometimes to to take on all of that concern and, and all of that worry so I am so we, we are so grateful that you are there for us to lay our concerns at your feet to, to bring our, our, our worries, to bring our concerns, and, and to know that you have the strength not only to, to he bring healing to those that we, that we lift up during this time, but also to give us strength, to give strength to the caregivers in this room, to the ones who are carrying these, these concerns in their hearts. We are all receiving strength from you, and for that we are grateful. We pray for each and every one of these mentioned. These, uh, those mentioned this morning here at our 8 o'clock in this service and that will be mentioned later at our 5 o'clock service. We know that you are the ultimate strength. You are the one that will bring wholeness to each and every one of these. Give us that faith to, to know that you will do what we are asking. Your son brings us such hope. Your son allows us to see a situation as it is now and to picture it in a different way. And that is what hope is. And that is what we receive from him. So allow us to continue to have that hope as we move through our time of, of healing and our time of reaching wholeness. Be with our world as we are beginning a new uh, time of elections. And we know recently how divisive that can be. Allow us to communicate kindly with one another. When we disagree with one another, let us disagree um, in a way that shows that we understand that we are all created by you, that we are all loved by you. Uh, those uh, conflicts, those physical conflicts that are going on in this world, we ask for a peace to come upon them, a peace for the, uh, the leaders that are continuing to keep them going, and, and uh, a peace to come across the hearts of all involved. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who uh, sets the example for us and shows us how this world could be. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
I mean, every day we are trying to do our best to be the best people that we can be. be kinder, smarter, healthier, more generous, blah, 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 you know. But I love the idea of goal setting. So I'm not really against them. And my work actually requests that we goal set every year. We do these things called PDPs, or performance development plans, every six months, but the one at the year end is obviously the biggest one. This is the one where we go through and reflect on how we did in each area of our job, that led our job description, and then we set about four or five goals of what we want to accomplish in the year. So naturally, I find these to be a little bit difficult, but necessary. I think it's good to reflect on the previous year and think about what you'd like to do better in the next year, but I think going to church each week, or when you can, I see your love, Pastor Michael, <laughs> helps reinforce some of those goals for me. I heard uh, somebody, a podcaster that I listened to, uh, who's a finance person, but is also a uh, Christian, I heard him put Sunday church in the best terms I think I've ever heard. He calls it like a weekly pep rally for God and Jesus. <laughs> it's just meant to reinforce the message to walk in his footsteps every day and be kind to your fellow humans and spread that love and joy to everyone you can. And communion is also a part of that weekly message. Every week, or when we can be here, Pastor Michael, if you want to look, we reflect on what our Lord Jesus sacrificed for us. And we bring that love that knowledge, that reflection into our minds and hearts. And hopefully, we let that knowledge and that love fill our hearts and bodies while we take the communion and bring it into the rest of the week. Let us try to take that communion into our day today and our week so that our hearts and our minds can be filled with that message of love. When they were all gathered together in one place, after giving thanks, he took the bread and broke it and said, take, eat. Each of you, this is my body. Then he took the cup and said, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day and thank you for this recent rain, which will help renew life. Please let us be your instruments during this week to help renew life through renewing faith, hope, and love in those who need it. Please keep us safe and healthy until we return here next week. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will the servers come forward, please? <coughs>
together in remembrance of Christ. I'm sure it's uh, fairly common knowledge that due to some external events over the past few months, our church has been experiencing some financial challenges. And our gifts, they help fund not only the essential ministries, such as the food bank and other ministries, but they also help fund the basic operation of the church, such as lights, payroll, um, property repairs, etc., etc. So I would ask that we each prayerfully consider our giving status, and please know that your gifts are very much needed and very much appreciated. You can provide your gifts by leaving them in the offering boxes here at the church. You can drop off your gift at the Little Brown Church. There's an offering box at the rear, or you can contribute your gift online at cobtoday.org. Thank you. One of the things that we're going to be getting at this church is something called Tidely, and you'll actually be able to go to uh, the offering boxes, and there's going to be a QR code, and you can uh, scan it. So for uh, people that don't know what check is, or, <laughs> or don't carry cash. We have a lot of new people that have said to me, I don't have checks and I don't carry cash, so I, I want to give, but I can't. And so, this is for you. And so they will be, they will be and for everyone. Um, well, well, that's gonna be coming in the next several weeks, and so uh, that's gonna be another way that you can, that you can pay uh, uh, your, your tithes and offerings. And so it's, we're moving into the 20th century, people. <laughs> <laughs> Let us give thanks to all the gifts that we will receive. Most of all, God, we thank you for each and every gift that we will receive that allows us to continue to do your work. We thank you for the opportunity to do it. We thank you for the hands that provide the means by which we are able to do outreach that we yet to even uh, think of, that you act, that you yet to lead us to. A blessing on each of the hands and a blessing on the work of this church. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. That will take a, just a couple minutes and say hello to each other. And when you hear the band play, please go back to your seat.
scripture reading today is from Mark. Mark chapter 1. By the way, this is, if you're in Bible study, we just went through this because we are in Mark and we just got into chapter 2. So this is from Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake where they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. By the way, reason to get up in the morning to come to church, just so I get to say Zebedee. <laughs> <laughs> he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. When I was a child, it was, it was a tradition of our family every year to go up to Mammoth Lakes in the summer. Uh, I've told you Mammoth Lake stories before in the past. Now, Mammoth is a place, if you're not from around here, uh, Southern California, um, it's up in Northern California, the Sierra Nevadas, and it's probably more famous for the winter when they're skiing on Mammoth Mountain. Yeah. And you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in the summer, it's a whole different vibe. Uh, the area is made up of several uh, small lakes, many that feed one into the other. And in addition, Owens River runs through the area. And the lakes in the river are, are just loaded with fish. Some are there naturally and others are stocked. Uh, um, and at least that's how it was when I was a kid. By the way, I used to love to go to the hatchery when I was a kid. That was another the day uh, we could go. I didn't know why we could just fish there. It would have been so much easier. Uh, <laughs> so, so as a child, because we spent so many, many summers in Mammoth, I learned to fish. And we did a lot of fishing. At the river, I remember tossing out the line and watching the current take the bobber down the river. And on the lake, standing on the shore and casting out as far as I possibly could. Or sometimes we would fish off of the, the bridge that went across Twin Lakes. Uh, but on a very rare occasion, we might take a rowboat out into the lake to, uh, to fish. But that was never really a good idea. Here's a typical trip on the rowboat. We pile the whole family, my mom, my dad, my brother, and myself, into uh, this rowboat, and my dad uh, rows it out in the to the middle of the lake. Uh, and that's usually accomplished by an awkward and S-shaped pattern that goes like this. But eventually we get there, nonetheless. Anyway, we finally get to the middle of the lake, and I don't know if it's the sound of the water on the paddles, or the sound of the waterfall coming down into the lake, or the half-gallon of Kool-Aid that I'm sure we just finished, but when we got to the middle of the lake, my brother says, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> my dad tells him to hold it, and he tries, but you know holding it is usually accomplished by rocking back and forth, which is nothing that goes well with being out in the middle of a boat with a rowboat. So eventually my dad caves and we take the boat back to the side. And while my brother is in the woods, taking care of business, my parents say to me, why don't you go too? To which I reply, don't need to. <laughs> Are you sure? Maybe you should at least try. But I'm confident, don't need to. So my brother returns to the boat and we begin that awkward S-shaped journey back out into the center of the lake. And when we arrive, <laughs> you know what happens. Of course, now I need to go. And I figure that, well, they've returned to the shore for my brother. This should not be an issue. Uh, surely they're going to return to the shore for me. So I begin to announce that I too need to go back to the woods. I say, excuse me. I think I, and before I can finish the sentence, my dad says, go off the side of the boat. <laughs> That's my memory of the throw boat. <laughs> and one of my fondest memories of my dad. Anyway, today's story is quite a different type of fishing story. Um, uh, in, in today's story, we see Christ is passing by and we see Simon and Andrew and they're casting a net into the lake. And we find James and John who probably are fishing from, oh it says they're fishing from a boat. Anyway, although this, this story might have reminded me of the, the story I just told you, uh, again, they're very different times, types of fishing stories. Actually, this isn't a fishing story at all, at least in the traditional sense. Jesus sets the real theme when he says, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Or as you might have learned it in Sunday school, fishers of men was an old translation. What he's really 
talking about here is bringing people to Christ's ministry, bringing people to the realm of God. Remember, these people fished uh, with nets, not with fishing poles. You know, when I used to teach Sunday school and we would teach the kids this story, uh, the kids always pictured someone with a rod and a reel, you know, casting out nets and catching people one by one on a great big hook. <laughs> but <laughs> that's not the imagery that's presented here. The real imagery is the net being thrown out and, and spreading out in the air and encompassing all the fish in its path and bringing all of those fish back to the boat. When we see this, we can imagine the word of God being sent out and spreading out as it travels and encompassing all of those in his path and bringing them back to Christ. But before Christ uh, invites the masses to follow him, he has to do a little personal fishing. In this case, he's fishing for disciples who will help him to spread the word. And he asks them to put down their nets and to follow. You know, when we read about the disciples putting down their nets and following Jesus, we can just skim right over that and not think about it very much. But, but think about it. Think about it for a moment. What did it mean for them to put down their nets and to follow? To put down their nets and to just leave? And then it says immediately, actually. It meant that these disciples were giving up everything. The nets symbolized their sense of security. The nets were how they made their living. And they were throwing them down on the ground and just following this uncertain path. Abandoning their families, abandoning their cultural traditions to follow Christ because of a faith that was already building up inside of them. At this moment, the disciples made a decision. A decision to follow. They made a decision to make their lives about following Christ. Throwing down their nets. Now, when I read this, I have to ask myself, you know, what are my nets? What are your nets? What are the, the things that we put down to follow Christ? What is it that we put down so that we may follow him? In, in, in Luke, Christ says, none of you can become my disciples unless you give up all of your possessions. Anybody for that? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing that we can actually read this in a different way. We don't need to take it as literally as the disciples did. For the disciples to become disciples, they were in fact giving up all of their possessions. But there's another understanding of Christ's words, and this understanding is something that better applies to us. When Christ speaks of giving up possessions, he is speaking also of where we put those possessions in our hearts. Christ asked that as disciples, we put him first. He wants our walk with him to be our priority. He asks that we do not pursue earthly possessions at his expense. And by possessions, this also includes not only idols, but also you know, success and prestige and things like that. Not to say that these things aren't important, you know, uh, that, or that they shouldn't be searched out, because they can be wonderful. But these things should not be achieved at the expense of our relationship with Jesus Christ. I see people all around this church throwing down their nets all around this community. I see them giving up their weekends to do things like going to Tijuana for the home build. And, and I see people driving out of their way to get other people to bring them to church because they don't have a way of getting here. I, I, I see people volunteer for our food pantry and, and take communion to people that can't get here. And take meals to people like Linda and other people who can't get here. I don't want to give the impression that I see throwing down nets as... You know, just giving up something or just playing the martyr. It's simply putting Christ first in all that we do. It's knowing that our relationship with him will influence all that we do. Because when we throw down our nets and we put Christ first, now we are in the right position to follow him. When, we, when Christ is in the lead, we're set to follow you know, in the Gospels, it wasn't only the disciples that Jesus asked to follow him. Many were asked. And back then, they could physically do that. They could physically follow him, walk around behind him. But today, we're not able to accept that invitation to physically walk with him. But we can still be with him. We can still learn from our journey with him. We can still follow Jesus. But let me tell you something about following Jesus. Um, as I spent this week thinking about the idea of following Jesus... I couldn't help but notice that there was a little song playing in my head all week long. So I'm driving and riding. Sing it with me. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Did you notice something about those lyrics? The words don't say, I follow Jesus, I follow Jesus, although that would be a nice song, they're nice <laughs> lyrics. They, the song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. And the more I thought about it this week, the more I realized that that word decided is for me the word that stands out the most, at least in that first stanza, the most interesting and I believe the most important word in the song. Following Jesus is a decision that we make, and it comes with a lot more weight than other decisions. Deciding to follow Jesus is the greatest decision that we can make, and one that doesn't come as easy as you might think. You know, any of us can go to church. You know, going to church is physically getting in your car or whatever you took to get here and, and coming into this building. Going to church is finding a place in the pew, singing a song, listening to a sermon, Joining in a prayer, going to church can be singing in a choir or the band, serving on a board, serving communion. Going to church is all of these things and more, but we can do all of these things and still not have Christ in the lead. We can do all these things and still not be following Christ. You know, anyone who declares they are a Christian is by definition a Christian. If they identify as a Christian, they are a Christian. A Christian can believe in Christ. A Christian can believe in the teachings of Christ, believe in the works of Christ. A Christian can read the Bible, go to Sunday school, recite scripture off the top of his or her head. A Christian can do all these things and still not have Christ in the lead. A Christian can do all these things and still not be following Christ. When we have decided to follow Jesus, there's no getting around it. No turning back. No turning back. We cannot be a follower of Jesus without actually following Jesus. Following Jesus involves a constant connection to him. It involves listening to him with every step of the way. Following Jesus does not involve negotiating with him, but rather trusting in him. Following Jesus involves being an ambassador for Christ in our daily lives, in our relationships, in our interactions, in our decisions, and in how we carry ourselves every day. Following Jesus involves the comforting of those who are suffering. Following Jesus involves seeking justice for those who are somehow treated differently by our society. Following Jesus involves constantly seeking the common good and having a positive outlook towards all of humankind. Following Jesus involves demonstrating for others the way of living with oneself, with others, and with all of creation. Following Jesus involves learning each and every day and growing each and every day. And following Jesus involves not only living with Jesus, but living in the light of Christ. Just like the first disciples did when they dropped their nets and followed their faith by following Christ. It is a decision to make, and it is up to each and every one of us to make it. You may have made that decision years ago. You might have made that decision five minutes ago. But wherever you are, if you haven't made it yet, wherever you are on your journey, know that Christ is waiting for you. Know that Christ is waiting for you to put down your nets and put him in a position to carry your burdens. To put down your nets and put your faith completely in his leadership. Because when we have put down our nets, and when we have put Christ in front of us, we have truly decided to follow Jesus. We pray with me. <coughs> God of our strength, we thank you for your Son. We ask that you help us to lie down our nets and to make Christ our priority. So that each and every day, we may follow him as we continue our journey of faith. Be with us on that journey and keep us focused on the path ahead and the plan you have for each of our, our lives. Be with those gathered here today and keep us safe and healthy until we return to this place next time. It's in your son's most holy name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Michael. If you all please stand as you are able to sing our last song in case you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> We're singing, I have decided to follow the dance. <laughs> Thank you. 